Sandy Munro is going to be here to address some challenges that I have heard around the industry to the Tesla's battery day claims. Does Elon Musk's plan for the new generation of batteries have some holes in it? Or is it a solid plan to pull away from the competition for years to come? Well, we're going to find out right now. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If you are interested in everything that's going on in the world of electric cars, and most importantly, if you enjoy Sandy Monroe, well, he's here every month. So don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Tesla's battery day has unveiled some amazing tech and a lot of people were absolutely floored by it and some were disappointed. Now, I think both camps have a case, but me and the curious journalist that I am, I started wondering in my head, like, why is Tesla once again the only one innovating? How come no one ever thought about this type of stuff? For example, the one-piece casting. I mean, this is not a technology that Ford or GM couldn't have thought about, I don't know, 50 years ago? Or increasing the diameter of the battery cells or building them into the body structure. So I started asking around the industry people who work for other brands and they have actually challenged uh, some of these innovations and said, you know, they may not be as practical as you may think. So I figured, all right, why don't I gather it all in one basket and bring it all to the top manufacturing guru, Sandy Monroe. So I am going to throw some of these questions at Sandy that I essentially crowdsourced and see what he has to say. But before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Climate Exchange. The Tesla raffle is back. You can win a Tesla of your choice. Only 4,000 tickets will be sold. So make sure to get yours using the link in the description of this video. And even if you don't win, the money will go towards a great environmental cause. And buy new charge. Already have a 240 outlet, but want to charge two electric cars or maybe split it between a car and an appliance without spending tons of money on an electrician well check out new charge your plug and play solution get one today and use the discount code in the description of this video i wanted to talk about a couple of things that we talked about last time right the big things uh that that elon announced in the battery day but once they settled in my mind and once i actually started talking to some people who um uh challenged some of the ideas that elon had I wanted to run them by you because they kind of made sense to me and I wanted to balance it, you know, out with what with, with, with what Elon was saying during the uh, battery day. And I guess okay. the biggest thing that hasn't settled in my mind is the single piece casting. You know, um, you know, why don't you explain a much better person to explain to my audience what is this single piece casting? And I know you've been suggesting that to Tesla for a long time until they finally did it. Um, Tell us a little, just educate us a little bit about what it is. Okay, so um, the first off, um, I suggested they should reduce the number of parts. Um, I never in my wildest dreams think, thought that they were going to go to a single piece casting. We've been promoting that to lots of different customers. Um, BMW, uh, Chrysler, Ford, General Motors, Mercedes, Bentley even. But the cost associated with the machines and the tooling and whatnot, it usually just they they just run away. They don't want to do it. They don't want to they don't want to try it. So a single piece casting basically means that you're taking the the whole of the structure of a, a portion of the car, and uh, and you're turning it into one great big gigantic um, structural member. Now, um, if you think about it, uh, a tank is a good example, okay? A battle tank is a great big gigantic casting. So you're looking at unbelievable amounts of strength and the stresses that would normally go into a bunch of sheet metal parts, that goes away. And then you look at all the welding and all the little bits and pieces that have to be stamped and welded together and, and, and manually put together, they all go away. <clears throat> and they're going away in milliseconds, milliseconds. Okay, that's fast. That's unbelievably fast. It takes forever to grab up all these little bits and pieces and put them in a little gauges and, and, uh, and make sure that they're right and then put them into fixtures and then clamp them all up and then weld them together and then take that little piece and bring it like four or five parts and then bring it to another place for another 
uh, uh, subassembly that gets a little bigger, so a module kind of a thing, on and on and on. That makes a huge difference. It gets rid of the body shop. If you, basically what you're looking at is three gigantic castings. One will be for the rear end, one will be for the front end, and one will be for the batteries. So uh, you're looking at three monster sized castings, and then they'll be, um, they could either be welded, which I wouldn't recommend, but anyway, they could either be welded together or they could be um, bolted and then welded, which is better from a, uh, from a stability standpoint. Yeah, so these, this is a really, really big deal. And it's something that lots of people have talked about, but nobody had the balls to do. All right, so now that makes sense. Uh, but here's the challenge that I'm throwing your way here, because, um, you know, based on what you just said, uh, uh, and I totally understand the savings and the simplicity and the fact of not having 100 parts or whatever and, and less welding so you can produce cars faster, but... You know, especially with a manufacturer like Tesla, when things change all the time, right? They change their parts. I mean, you 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 probably notice more than anybody. They change their parts all the time. What happens when Tesla wants to change one little thing in that casting or even a big thing, like maybe going from a single motor to a dual motor on one axle? What happens then? How hard it is to reconfigure uh, the machine to start to start creating the new shape uh, with a with a with a configuration that's a little different. Okay, so the term around here with toolmakers, myself included, is NBD, no big deal. Okay, so you take the mold out, and you you have several options. You can burr it out, which means that you can grind it, uh, grind a new uh, uh, a new feature if it's small, or you can. Um, uh, or you can uh, machine it out if it's, it's, it's a relatively big thing. Or um, you can use something called EDM, electric discharge machine, and you can basically burn it out. It's like a arc, and it goes in and does what it needs to do. The, uh, the amount of effort is minimal in comparison to uh, when you do these kinds of things, you do a... Um, you know, you do a, a, a risk uh, assessment, and then you do uh, a cost assessment, and if the cost comes out as being this is good for our bottom line, then you go ahead and, and go and, and get the job done. And in a month, if it's a big job, in a month you'll have it back up and running. So it's no it's no big no big deal at all. None. How long would how long would machine be sort of out of service and not being able to actually create the part? You usually run. You usually will have at least two sets of dies. So while one die is producing product, you fix the other one. And then when you make the die swap, which is normal tool change, it's got that new feature function in it. So about a month, uh, but, but it's not, you're not gonna lose any production, none. Okay, that's what I was asking. All right, so yeah. now with, uh, with, uh, with that said, um, obviously like any manufacturer, Tesla has to continue making parts for the previous versions you know, to obviously supply them when the, you yeah. know, cars are being damaged or whatever. How would that play out if you're just saying, well, there's only two sort of uh, casting machines. So with the pace at which Tesla changing things around, they can have, you know, five, six, seven, I don't know how many per year changes where they're going to have to maintain it. Is that possible for one machine to continue making the previous versions of the same piece? How difficult or easy it is to, to, to accomplish? Well, what you do is you make sure that your new design is backward compatible. Backward compatibility means that uh, I'm going to go in a new direction, but if I have to repair something old, then it'll still work. It'll still, it'll still do the job. No big deal. NBD, your new, uh, your new uh, acronym. Yeah. So another uh, sort of question that I had from a different angle is that, you know, let's say somebody, um, let's say I have a Model Y and it has, you know, one one piece uh, casting pieces, I believe two of them, right, front and back, and uh, they, um, somebody, you know, rear ends me on, on, on one side and essentially damages that piece because it's, you know, it's there. Um, now, instead of, right now, instead of getting the entire part, right, which is expensive, um, 
you know, you would have to replace whatever 10, 15 parts because there's so many of them right now and you're good to go versus if I would have to replace the entire piece, um, that obviously would be way more expensive and way more labor intense. Um, is that is that going to create a problem for the repairs? Right now, what insurance companies are doing is they'd rather scrap cars than, um, than have them repaired because <clears throat> a lot of the repairs that have to be made, like if it's a significant amount and you've actually intruded into the structural members of the car, they'll just scrap it out. So if, you got, if you've gotten into an accident with something like a Model Y or what have you, and you have those big castings, if you intrude so hard into the, uh, it, it, like, a, like a sore kind of a crash on, uh, in the front, or a heavy rear end crash, and you break those castings, that thing will be written off. No, no insurance company is going to want to even see it back on the road. In fact, nowadays, in the old days, people would go and buy a wreck or something like that and try and put it back on the road. Now it's uh, totally different. You have to pull things out of it so that it would make it impossible for people to, to do just that. That's, that's pretty much my sort of challenges to the uh, One Piece casting. But there's another one that I wanted to also discuss with you, which is, you know, the new uh, battery pack. I don't know what we're even calling it. Uh, without the actual structure, without the actual battery pack around it. You know, we're talking about, you know, all of these molded together in one brick, as you call it. Um, yeah. But there are a lot of, but a lot of people kind of challenge that in terms of saying like, okay, that's, I, you know, understand it's going to be pretty solid. But at the same time, if there is not enough protection and another car or, you know, the car can, uh, near the Tesla can actually <sighs> ride onto a large stone or a large piece of metal, just the impact with the battery that's not protected can still cause a fire, much like the very original Model S cars that did not have the shield underneath it. Um, you know, is there some validity to that concern that the battery pack still needs to be protected regardless of being very solid? Well, the battery pack is now structure. It's a structural uh, member. So what you're looking at is something that's got um, well, way more uh, structure associated with it than the existing battery pack. So um, actually, I'm, we're creating one. Um, right now uh, we're, we're trying to reproduce what that thing will look like and uh, and so you're going to have um, you're going to have a very thick section it'll have holes in it it'll be a, a, it'll be a, a, a honeycomb kind of a product and a honeycomb product is much stronger than a uh, than just two, two or three flat plates so it's going to have that on the bottom it's going to have um, an intrusion beam on the sides. It's just going to be built into the, uh, the new battery pack. So uh, there's no, this is going to be stronger than what you've got now. It'll, it'll be much harder to intrude into the, uh, into the actual battery cells, the little um, 4680s. And it'll be impossible to get in there. Well, nothing's impossible, but it'll be very, very difficult for anybody to crash it hard enough so that they would uh, they would break through the uh, the outer shell and and get to where the cells are it's uh, no this is much stronger this is a better way to go because really and truly now what you've got is all those cells are glued together that makes them an entire structure it's not like right now where I mean you bang into it you've got four things that can rattle around the battery packs now the uh, they, they, can, they can bang into each other. Um, it's got breathing room between them, which means that, okay, it's good for crush, but not so good for, uh, for st uh, like uh, structural strength. So I think, uh, no, I think, I think it's much better now. The, this new design is what I would pick. Now, talk yeah. also a little bit about the new batteries itself, themselves, because, you know, because you know, a simple question could be is like, why don't we take the, you know, Model 3 or Model S batteries and do the same thing, glue them together in one big, big brick, you know, one big brick. Um, uh, why can't we do it with these, but we can't do it with the next generation batteries from Tesla? Because those batteries are bigger in diameter. You could do it with that, but it costs you a fortune. 
the amount of time and effort to uh, stitch all those things together and whatnot in a in a giant sized pack like that, I mean it's it's stupid. It weighs to those when you use the little batteries, the the weight goes up because steel weighs more than the uh, the uh, the lithium pack that's inside the steel. Um, and so the weight would go up, the 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 labor would go up to put it together. The number of um, the number of quality issues you have with the new pack goes way down. I mean, there's only, I'm guessing, at 96 uh, batteries inside, or battery cells in there. No, it's, it's all much. Everything about it is better. Everything. Everything. And, and so you mentioned that it, 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 it would uh, essentially weigh more because the diameter is smaller and there's, you know, the, there's still a casing. More is. steel. But, yeah. but, but, okay, so then the, the question is right now, the new diameter is going to be 46, right? Yeah. Why not make it bigger than that? Why not make it a hundred or two hundred? Like where where's that that <clears throat> that sweet spot? Why forty six? Well, forty six, um, fifty is what I wanted, um, but the big problem is wicking. I I need to wick the um, 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 what would you call it? Um, I need to wick the fluid all the way through to the bottom. If I can't do that, then I don't have a battery. The bigger you get, the harder it is to wick it down, to press the, the fluids in uh, that make the electrolytes that make everything work. If I can't do that, uh, then I, I'm wasting my time. 46 is probably the optimum. Other people have tried it around 50, but 46 is probably the best thing that we could probably have, and Tesla does a lot more experimentation than I ever do. So, okay. Um, so anyway, that's, that's kind of like uh, the... Um, that's that's kind of like what's going on. And you also mentioned the reduction in weight uh, in terms of just the battery pack. Uh, let's just look at a hundred kilowatt hour battery pack, the current one and a new one that they're working on. What would be the weight reduction that you see in realistically that Tesla will be able to achieve because of this? I think you're looking at about 10 to 12 percent, maybe even 15. Uh, weight reduction because of the bigger cans, so the the steel weight goes down, and then I'd say another um, six or eight percent because I don't have two sets of structure. If you remember, we did uh, stress tests on the uh, battery pack, and we also did it on the frame of the car, and it came out the same. That means that basically it's twice as strong as it had to be. Now they might go and say, okay, well let's give it an extra twenty-five percent. So what I think is you're looking at another six or eight percent um, uh, weight and cost reduction because of that. All right. Thank you to Sandy once again for clearing things up. And by the way, just in case if you don't know, he has a YouTube channel of his own. As a matter of fact, he's just released a video about his understanding on how the 4680 battery pack is going to work. And as you can see, he's even built a full scale mock up which looks absolutely awesome. I put that link in the description of this video. And of course, you're watching me on YouTube. You can just click on it right there. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Don't forget to subscribe because Sandy is back every month. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.